You're listening to Catholic Express, the daily podcast for Catholic kids that strives to plant seeds of faith. Hey there, Sprouts. Today is October 22nd, 2020. It is also the feast day of a great modern saint, Pope St. John Paul II. Now this week we have been talking about John the Baptist and how he prepared the way for Jesus's public ministry, but we are going to take a break from that today to celebrate this incredible saint. Now, chances are, you know a little bit about Pope John Paul II, but he is so incredible that even if you know a lot, there's probably more that you can learn. Now, Pope John Paul II was born in Poland, and because he was born in Poland, his youth was full of struggle brought on by war. Poland not only played a part in World War I, but also World War II when it was controlled by the Nazis. And then even after World War II, when it was controlled by the Soviet Union. However, from a young age, Pope John Paul II was determined to become a priest. This required, however, that he attend an underground seminary. Now, this was because the Soviets repressed all religion and they re- they in particular hated Catholicism. They closed churches, they closed seminaries, and yet in Poland in particular, people loved the faith and they were determined to find a way to not only worship, but to train new priests. So Pope John Paul II was ordained a priest. He served in small parishes. And from the beginning of his ministry, he always had a deep love for families. One of his favorite things to do was actually to take a group of families on camping trips or other outdoor adventures. In fact, he was on a camping trip with families when he got an urgent message that he needed to go. And then he received the news that he would be ordained a bishop. Soon he became a cardinal. Pope John Paul II was also a brilliant mind, and he was constantly thinking about ways that he could further understand the great mysteries of God, particularly the sacrament of marriage that led into family, and ways that he could communicate this with the world. Well, in 1979, to everyone's surprise, including his own, Pope John Paul II was named the next Pope. Now, this is remarkable because he was from Poland. Nearly every single Pope before him had either been Italian or French. So it was crazy. Although he quickly went on to become one of the most beloved popes we have ever had. And he did remarkable things while he was pope. One of the most remarkable things he did is he played a role in ending communism and toppling one of the biggest empires the world has ever known, the Soviet Union. And he did this without telling people to be violent, without raising an army. He did it through love. In fact, shortly after he was named Pope, he went back to Poland. And people, of course, were so excited. One of their own was the Pope. Incredible. So a huge crowd gathered. But before he spoke, the communists warned him. They said, you had better tow the communist line. You had better say what we want you to say. They threatened him in all sorts of ways. But Pope John Paul II, he wasn't afraid because he was devoted to Mary. He knew that she was with him and he knew that God had a plan here. So he went and he simply told them, be not afraid. Don't be afraid. And through his words, he started a peaceful revolution. The people of Poland never lost sight of their faith in Jesus Christ. They just resisted with love and and peace. And eventually, Poland was free and the whole Soviet Union toppled. His whole papacy, Pope John Paul II, reached out to all types of Catholics in tons of countries. He was constantly traveling, but he also reached out to non-Catholics, to Protestants, to Muslims, to Jews. Everyone, he brought a message, message of love that Jesus loved them. He also reached out to young people in an incredible way. 
He started World Youth Day, where huge auditoriums and football fields and huge areas would be filled with youth ready to be welcomed into the new evangelization, where everyone was called to bring the message of Jesus Christ to the world. Now, one of the most dramatic moments of Pope John Paul II's life is when someone tried to kill him. Miraculously, he was not killed. This happened on the Feast of Our Lady of Fatima. But what's most touching about this experience is that Pope John Paul II went to visit the man that shot him in jail, and he forgave him. And that man, touched by this deep forgiveness, converted and became a follower of Jesus Christ himself. The last big struggle that Pope John Paul II faced in his life is that he battled Parkinson's disease in his final years. Parkinson's disease made walking and even talking very difficult. There is a lot of suffering involved with this disease, and yet he persevered and he remained a father to us all. Shortly after Pope John Paul II died, many people begged that he become a saint. But of course, in our Catholic tradition, there is a procedure. Once a person dies, they have to it's investigated their life to make sure they lived a life of heroic virtue. And then they have to have two miracles that were procured through their intercession after they died. And so Pope John Paul II was named Pope St. John Paul II in 2014 by Pope Francis. And so today my challenge for you, my friends, is to remember our great our great Pope, our great Father in Heaven, Pope John Paul II, who is more than happy to intercede for your needs. So pray through his intercession today. Pope St. John Paul II, pray for us. That's it for Catholic Sprouts today. We'll be back tomorrow. But until then, continue to grow in your faith and truly sprout into the beautiful creation that God created you to be. Just one more thing. We are running a really fun sale on our rosary board books and our saint patterns for cross-stitch and melty beads. The sale runs through the end of October, so I encourage you to check it out by checking the links in this podcast episode.